Welcome. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, dynamic blocks, okay, AutoCAD. So what I'm going to refer to is that if you want to follow along with dynamic blocks, uh, please go to your uh, iDrive uh, CAD, uh, Lunch and Learn Training, and access the T005, okay? Okay, right here, T005, dynamic blocks. And in here, you, you should see like part one, part two, part three. But what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to combine all of this into this one, um, uh, into one presentation. Now, if you're on, um, if you're on like, uh, let's say SharePoint, what you can do is that you go to design technology. Okay. And all you have to do is that just click on this, just type in dynamic block. Okay, as you search. And what happened is that when I click on the search button, it will basically talk about, you know, part one, part two, and then et cetera. So what you could do is that you could click on one of these, okay, and it will just go access to it. So if you want to get out of the training, just go to training documents. It has a lot of the other content. Okay, so search button, I usually use the search button because trying to find the actual location of the file is really daunting, so. Okie doke. Okay, so what is dynamic block? Now, I'm just gonna go straight into the demo. Um, dynamic block was first introduced in uh, 2006. Uh, that's over 12 years now. And what happened is that instead of having a static block, uh, what this allows you to do is that it allows you to basically give you more of an option to stretch your block rather than using one block and create multiple variations of it. Uh, a perfect example would be uh, if you want to do like let's say a column for instance. Well first and hopefully this is fun. Okay so let's say for example if you are creating a column. Come on mouse. Yeah sorry my, my demo is a little bit. Hi how's it going? Okay, so the, uh, a perfect example would be, let's say, for example, I'm going to go and create like a column 12 by 12, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm just going to create a column, just a uh, column, okay? I'm not going to give it an, uh, uh, a size, okay, because there's no point. Hello, welcome. Oh, can't see anything? Okay. Uh, okay, so if you have any issues, uh, it must be your computer. Uh, all right, show my screen. This is why I want I want people to basically say, raise your hand if you can see my screen. <laughs> so this, when when I say it, right, if you cannot see anything, this is why. Okay, raise your hand. So now can you see my screen? I hope. It says here. Oh, okay. It says here. Not... All right. Anyways, I apologize. Okay. So in the previous version, what we typically do is that we create a block, and you have a block like this. And then when you want to create another block, right? So let's say you have to explode it. Let's say this is just a variation of, uh, of the previous block. What you do is that you stretch it and then you create another block called column, you know, column two. Okay, let's say I'm gonna pick this point and, and then select it. And then this, that's basically how you create a block, right? From the previous version. So what the dynamic block does is that it basically wants to take away all this uh, unnecessary stuff, okay? So what you're doing right now is that if you want to start dynamic block, the first thing you want to do is that type in B edit, okay, or B E for shortcut. Okay. Now what it does is that it gives you a menu what you want. So in here, you're going to get to the point where, okay, it gives you a, a separate palette. Okay. The one palette I'm going to be focusing mostly today, it's going to be a linear stretch. Okay. There's other commands that you can actually look at but I'm not gonna be covering all of it because it's gonna be a lot of stuff. So I'm just gonna show you what's the most important stuff that I find a lot of people would use. Okay, so let's say if you wanna stretch the column, the first thing I would do is that you cl uh, click on this linear stretch. First thing first is that you will set a um, insertion point, the starting point, and then the end point. You stretch it out. And now, next thing you wanna do is that you wanna activate this action button. Right now it's giving you this uh, caution mark and saying that it's not activated. So what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go right click on this and say modify selection. Now, what you're gonna do now is that you're gonna create a window and you select the object. 
Okay, think of this as kind of like, okay, where do you want to stretch it? Where's the region you want to stretch it? And then the way you go. Okay. Also, I always say, give it a name. Okay, so let's say this is going to be my width. And then you're going to repeat the process again. Let's say, for example, here, I'm just going to go up. Again, I'm just going to call this length. And now what you can do is that you can say, okay, action, modify, and then just take select that. And that's it. So how you know if uh, your dynamic block is actually working is you see that there is no those uh, caution mark on it. So let's right now let's go test it out. So I'm going to save it. Okay. Now what you have is that you are able to stretch your block this way, and you're able to stretch it this way. Okay. And then the other thing is is that you can also go to properties. If you do not like to stretch in and out, there is a option in here that you can actually stretch it. You see that width and length. Okay. So let's say this is going to be by 34, and this is by 26. Okay. And then you can just keep copying the block and say, I want it to be, oops, sorry, my mouse is a little bit uh, wonky. And you can say that I want this 12, and then I want this to be 14. So this allows you to kind of like have that flexibility, okay? Now, if you want to add more, I'm just going to show you, okay, let's say for example, right now, you created this simple column, you want to add more to it. Next thing you want to do is that you want to add hatches, and then you want to have different, different materials for the columns. So the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to go in, Okay, I'm going to go block editor. The next thing you want to put in is the visibility. Okay, so in here for visibility, I'm just going to click on this. Okay, and just say dump it there. Now, what happens is that right now when I add this in, this will highlight. The next thing you want to do is that you click on this and say, I want to call this blank. Okay, just say no hatch or whatever you want to call it. Next thing I want to do is that let, let's give it like a wood texture. Uh, next one would be steel, and then last one would be concrete. Okay, simple thing. So what you're technically doing is that you're creating a different version of the of this. You're just basically making a copy. So right now, blank. I'm just going to say show it blank. Here, I'm just going to show the hatch of the wood. Okay. So first, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to say hit pick a wood texture if there is a wood, okay? Yeah, this is gonna be a lot. So what I typically do is that if you hate scrolling down, uh, always click on the settings, okay? Gets you back into this. And then when you click on this, you can say, okay, I want a, I want a wood texture, okay? That looks like good. Okay, I'm just gonna use that. And here I'm just gonna say scale, I'm gonna say 24, okay? Ah, that looks good. Now, if you click on the next one, let's say steel. And I'm going to go to setting again, click on this. And here, I'm just going to use the steel settings. Just use that NC24, whatever. And I'm going to select that. Now, ah, that looks good. But the scale is a bit too much, so I'm just going to change it to 12. Come on. 12. Oh, sorry, scale, 12. There we go. And then lastly, I'm just going to put concrete, hatches, and I'm going to go settings. And then I'm just going to use here concrete, scale probably, let's say, 8. Uh, that's too big. So you can always change it down. Let's say I want it to be, okay, that looks good. So when you close this, oops. Okay, now what you have is that you have a blank. Okay, so you have a list and then you have a wood texture, you have steel, and you have concrete. Okay, pretty simple stuff. So what this does is that you, you create a column and then you can have multiple variations. Okay, so this is how you create a simple stuff. Any questions so far? I missed the part at the very beginning because I was listening to my desk and it's like, nah. Okay. Part. okay. But so columns, yes. are, is that a term for making a thing or are you considering it to be a column that you can stretch and actually be like a call, like a support call? Oh, support call. Well, this is basically like a, it's like a representation, right? Like let's say, for example, if you're doing it as a plan. So this is, 
this right. is kind of like the, the thing that you put in. Okay. okay. So this is for your thing, like we, I've done a toilet or a plant, this is a column. Okay. That's correct, the A column, right? Okay. Um, so what happens that, okay, so if you want to access the column stuff, okay, so what I did is that I have a built-in column, so all you have to do is that you go to architecture, uh, inferior design, and you go into structure, okay, same, same idea, right? So I'm basically using the same concept and I just basically put them in there. Okay, you guys, it's, it's for, you, for you guys to basically just go in there and just insert in a column. And then this is where you're gonna say, okay, what material I want, right? Again, it's the same principle. Okay, not been fancy, just simple stuff. Okay, so let's go into a little bit more complicated stuff. Okay, I know that you guys uh, do a lot of, let's say travel distance, for instance. Well, first I'm gonna open up a plan. I'm just gonna use a plan. Uh, from anything, okay? So let's say, for example, you guys want to use, um, I'm just gonna open up a, a still center. This is a, just a regular project. Okay, so I know that you guys do a lot of travel distance in AutoCAD just to show how, how long or how wide, whatever, right? So what you could do inside uh, AutoCAD is that you can actually create a dynamic block. This is probably not a good plan, probably you need a floor plan. Um, so if you if you are doing like um, uh, let's say travel studies and stuff like that, that allows like you know just to study and see if you need to you know create a secondary exit or not. So this is an opportunity you can actually create one. So how are you going to create it? Okay, I'm going to start with the line. Okay, you can go layer and just say this is going to be my travel distance. Okay. I'm just gonna give it like a, a color, okay, a true color to say, uh, I'm probably gonna go with blue, okay, that's my travel distance. Uh, for line type, I would say, okay, let's go into dashed, okay. Line weight, uh, you can make it as thick as you want, okay, 0.7 or one, I'll probably use one for now, okay. Come on, make that current, there we go. And I'm just going to put that in as uh, layer travel distance. Okay, let's say that's your travel distance. Now, I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to create a block. Okay, uh, call this travel distance. Okay, I'm going to go pick, pick that, and then select that, and then say, okay. What I want. The next thing you want to do is that you're going to go block editor again, EE, travel distance. Now, what I typically like to do is that I like to make sure that the line starts at something. Okay, let's say I'm going to say I'm going to start from five feet. Okay, make it five feet. The reason why is that um, you want to make this as whole number as possible because when you reset it, it's always going to go back to five feet. Okay, the minute you say you put like a, um, like a really weird number, that when you reset it, it's gonna go back to the weird number. So it's better to basically uh, select something that you can actually put in as a, you know, a, a factor or number. And then you have to pan 500 feet to the end of the line, why did I make it 500? Yeah, exactly. And if yes. you want to make it shorter, could you make it shorter? You can make it shorter, like, yes. Like the column? Or yeah. So that was the minimum for this stuff. You can. Okay. So you could do a minimum and maximum. So what I'm going to do is that, okay, so here what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the, the linear stretch for now. Okay. So let's say this is my linear stretch. Okay. And distance, I'm just going to leave it alone. Modify. Okay. So what you could do here is that you could select this. And then in here, there is one called the minimum distance, okay, value set. You see the minimum? You could say that my minimum is one feet, and then my maximum could be like, let's say, 45 feet or something, okay? So basically, if your distance reaches that particular one, then you cannot say, okay, you're reaching the max, okay? So this is why I like to do a lot of this, uh, so that I set a minimum so that if whoever goes below, up below that, it was always going to be set back to one feet. Okay? So you notice that it will give you a guide. Okay? You see that that is my distance. 
and when you hit close, okay, now when I go back to the smallest one, you see that it won't allow me to, and then if I want to go to the longest distance, it's always going to be 45 feet. And does it say something, oh, you exceeded it, or it just stops? It just stops at 45, yeah, it just basically tells people that, okay, your distance cannot be for more than 45 feet. Let's say we have no restriction, okay? So let's say I'm gonna remove that restriction and just say all off bats, okay? Just make it like, oh, actually, just make it zero. No, distance maximum, why is that? Can I remove it? Probably not. Okay, I'm just gonna erase it again and it just restarted. Okay. Now, if you want to add, let's say, a text to notify that this distance is um, how many feet, okay? So how would you do that? So let's say, for example, uh, I'm going to add a text. Okay. So first, my style. Oh, just use the style. Now, right now, the symbol is the style, so I'm going to go, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, D text or M text or whatever. So the first thing I would do is that I'm just going to go in text, okay, to say test. Now, for this one, what I want is that I want this to basically insert a field and give me the uh, object, okay? And then what you're going to do is that you're going to select this object, okay? And what you're going to do is that choose the length. Sure, five feet is fine. Okay, and in here you can just type it in text, a uh, distance, okay, let's see, distance, five feet. What this does is that whenever you stretch this line, okay, let me go close it. Let's see if it works. Okay, when I stretch this line, will it update? Uh, it probably will not update. Oh, there we go. That's how you do it, okay. What needed you to hit enter? Oh, just regenerate, okay. REA, okay? Yeah. So you just have to plan out, just make sure that the text is long enough, okay? I'm just going to make it, make sure that that thing is long enough, okay? Let's go save as, okay? So what this does is that it allows you to kind of have like a, a, a basic function, like if let's say when the line stretches, your block stretches, like that text will update automatically, okay? There we go. Now, what if you want to make that text move along with the line so that they're on the center okay so that's this is how you do it okay so first you're going to go in to go to block editor uh what i typically do is that i like to make the text uh bottom to the center or bottom uh sure bottom center okay so they're right at the bottom of the center and i like to move it to the midpoint of this okay so that you have an equal distance and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, okay, this is going to be, uh, yeah, sure, just make it like that. The next parameter you want to choose is that you want to choose the action, okay? Click on this call the move. Select the existing, uh, this, okay? Select that. Pick that as my focal point where he wants to stretch it. Next, you want to do is that you want to select that, and you notice that it basically say, okay, both of those got that move. Now, what you do is that right now when you stretch, uh oh, look what happened. It's not off center. Okay. There is a trick that you have to go into the block editor. You have to click on this. Okay. You notice that distance multiplier, it's one. So you want half of that. So every time it moves, you have to say it's going to be half of that. Okay. So let's say, for example, that's going to be half. And now what happens is that when you stretch it, it's always going to be on center. Okay? So when you move it here, move it there, so it basically makes it into a more of a center point. Okay? So this is kind of like uh, the basic stuff that you guys would probably do. All right? Now, you don't have to make it yourself. If you need something customized, just let me know. I'll help you. Okay? Because so that you don't have to think about this. But if you have to do really complicated stuff, just let me know. Like, if you need an arc, yeah, that's the separate thing. Any questions so far with this? No. Okay, good. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about is that um, 
I know you guys are doing a lot of elevations to say, you know, building elevation, stretching and all that stuff. Um, here, um, let me open up the um, the elevation for this. Okay. Yeah, this is a small project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to like pretend that it's a tower, and then you're basically using the same curtain wall, and then you copy it up to the next level, next level. Oh, come on. Open. Yeah, my my mouse is a little bit wonky. I don't know why. I apologize. Because you have an that's why. No, it's just the wireless. I never like wireless. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just a wireless mouse. Okay, so now let's say pretend that this is your um, this is your uh, curtain wall. Okay, let's say for example this. Yeah, let's pick pick the simplest one. So I'm just gonna copy this so that I don't ruin this particular. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of the lines. Okay, I know that most of the time what people does is that uh, they have a block of this, right? Let's say this is gonna be my curtain wall typical. I'm just gonna say pick point. And they select the object, okay? So what I've seen a lot of people do is that they make a copy of this and they make a copy and then let's say pretend that in the next level, it has to be a foot higher. Okay. Let's say for example, this is my, uh, this is my theoretical level. Okay. Let's say I'm going to copy that up to this. And then now what happened is that this thing is going to be a foot higher. Let's say this is going to be a 12 inch higher. So what I've seen a lot of people do is that this one typical is nice, but this top one, they would have to create a separate block just because of that height changes. So what I've seen is that, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just basically use the same block and only apply just one parameter. So all you have to do is uh, just go to block editor, okay? Um, just turn off the palette, just turn that off. Uh, let's see, offering palette, uh, just go to linear stretch. And all you have to do is just, just add that in, okay? It, yeah, it, and be changing. It. Yeah, because it's a waste of time. Like all you have to do is just tell tell uh, Re, uh, AutoCAD to basically say, "I want to stretch that." Okay. So once that's happening, then what you could do with this is that this thing can be stretched up. Okay, and you could keep building on that. Okay, you don't have to say, "Okay, I want to add Molly into this." Okay. So what we could do is that I'm just going to add a pretend mullion. All right, let's go nearest here. Let's say this is my mullion nearest right there. Okay, let's say that's my mullion. But the thing is, is that you want to basically adjust it to, uh, let's say this one I want to be uh, right here. And then this one I want to be right down here. Okay, oops. Copy, I should just make a copy. So what you want for the top is that you want the mullion to move as well. So I want to move this one as well. But at the same time, I want to add another one that, you know, the top mullion parameter you wanted to stretch down, let's say, whatever distance you want. At the same time, when you move this, this will also move with it. Okay? Right. So relative. So basically, this basically becomes your um, main stretching point. The second one would be, you create another one, okay, my tool, offering to a palace. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to add this, okay. You can put it anywhere you want. It doesn't matter where it is, but as long as it, 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 it has a starting point, that's all you care. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move it down, let's say, for example, this is my secondary point. And I'm just going to say that this is going to be my top mullion offset, okay. Offset. 
The next thing you want to do is that you want to select this and say, okay, this is the location I want to stretch it. Okay. Come on. And move with it. At the same time, since you have the stretching mechanism, you want to include those parameter into it so that when it's stretched, that arrow point will also move with it. Okay? So what you're going to do is that, again, you go back and say modify selection point. Oops, say this one. Action, modify. Um, let's say I'm going to stretch a little bit wider. And then I'm going to add this guy into the mix. Okay? Let's test it out. Let's see if it works. Okay. That's good. Now what you can do is that you can stretch this and then you can move it up. You see that it follows with it. Okay. Very cool. Next thing you can do is that, again, most of the time, whenever there's too many um, points, let's say insertion point, people will get confused. So what I typically like to do is that I like to hide this. Let's say this is my main point, okay? And then here, I do not want to show it because what happens is that people get confused. They start stretching stuff and then they don't know what it is. So what I like to do is that I like to basically say property, number of grips, just say zero, and then force people to use the property to change the height, okay? That was way, way more cleaner. You will probably see this more often in uh, some of my dynamic blocks, like the more complicated one. You have a lot of properties you can just choose rather than going into it and then say, you know, what you want. Okay, so what you could do is that, let's say, for example, all of this, this block, you can say, okay, top molly and offset, let's say I want it to be one foot six. So all of it move up one foot six. Okay, so you could do it pretty fast. So no, you no longer have to say, okay, move one for this, move one for that, each and every one. So when you build that in, that allows you to kind of like flex it simultaneously. So you build it once, you know, it basically flex the rest. Okay, is that, is that something useful? Okay, if, if you're not sure how this is gonna be done, like let's say for example, you wanna use it for your elevation, just let me know. I mean, I, I could help you how to, how to do this so that you can do like a quick study. Because especially when you're doing like an elevation for like a DP stage and such, you need this kind of a tool because you have to do it quickly. Okay. Most often what I've seen people done is that you just X line, cut, 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 trim, 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 right? It, it's a lot of work, right? And when you have to modify it, it's also Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. So what, what I'm doing with the block is that I'm just cutting down on that wastage so that you can select the block. The nice thing about the dynamic block is that you could go right click on this and go select similar, right? If it has the same name, you could select all of it simultaneously. Wherever they are. Exactly, exactly. So what you could do is that you could say, okay, this one I want to be two feet, okay? So that allows that flexibility and customization built into it, okay? Now, let's look at some of the uh, dynamic block. I know that some people have confused with some of the dynamic block, how it works. So right now, I'm just going to say, okay, how do you work with the existing dynamic block? Okay, so let's pretend that, okay, you're doing a work and then you want to do, oh, this is not it. Okay. Uh, architecture, um, imperial design. Okay, so let's say you want to do uh, a section or an elevation and such, right? So let's say, for example, I want to do a section. Now, what this does is that if you are using this multiple scale, don't do it. Because what tends to happen is that I'm going to show you what, what I mean by that, right? So let's say, for example, let's assume that this is a plan and you, you're cutting a section. Next thing you want to do is that you want to add multiple scale. Okay. So whenever you change the scale, you notice that that line starts to move, okay? So what I typically tell people not to do is that if you are using multiple scales, do not use this block. This block only works if you're using this one particular scale, one scale only. So if you wanna do multiple scale, uh, what I typically recommend doing is that just draw a line, okay, come on, end point. 
draw a line. Okay. I'm just going to erase that. What you're going to do is that you're going to be using either the elevations or the section tag, depending on which one you want. So I'm just going to use the section tag. It makes it easier. Okay. Let's say this is my this is my endpoint. Okay. And now what you can do is that you're going to select uh, the one called the um, no bubble one, no lines, just solid. There you go. That's what you want. Now, once you add the scale, okay, let's say I have a quarter inch. Okay, the minute I start to scale down, you notice that it stays as it is, right? So that it doesn't have to move. So if you're looking at annotative scale and you're using it for multiple, you know, blocks for different sizes, always draw a line and just put it in. Now, the other thing I uh, tell users you have to avoid using is do not mirror, okay? Okay, it's, it's happening in a lot of projects. Some people aren't, wa aren't watching this. So what happened is that whenever you mirror certain things, uh, what does is that that negative value, when you add multiple scale, it's going to offset back to whatever different location. And sometimes people having issues when you add multiple scale to the annotated object. So how you should do it is that do not mirror, make sure that the scale X, Y, Z is one. So what I'm going to do is that just, just rotate it this way. And then after that, flip it. Okay, there's a flip button. There we go. So simple as that. So that's how the dynamic block works. You just stretch around, just flip it, and then you have your uh, section. Or sure. Do you have wipeouts on those? Um... Um, unfortunately, I'm trying to avoid wipeouts. We had issues with wipeout in several projects. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's what happening is that once the, you have a lot of objects in there, wipeout tends to be turning to black for some odd reason oh. when it's printed out. It's because of the PDF output. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people are not configured. Something to keep aware: if you are using a lot of wipeouts. Uh, I always recommend that user, if you are using PDFs, oh, printer, uh, this is something happen more and more. Even like if you're printing like Excel worksheets, OLE objects, your Adobe by default, when you go to printer preferences, you have to always go in here and click on the event, change this to 300 DPI, okay? By default, it's going to be 12,000 DPI, too, too much, okay? A lot of time what happens is that your OLE object will fail, your wipeout will fail, it will give you black. It's because of this, right? Resolution is too high. So 300, it's good, okay? So this is for, for machine. If you have Adobe, you have to do this, okay? This IT will not help you. You have to tell Adobe what output resolution you want for your PDF. By default, it's going to be 12,000 DPI. If you know that it's going to be two, two, let's say, if you put 12,000 DPI, your plot is going to be 10 times slower than using 300 DPI. Okay, just just as a, a rule of thumb, 300 will get you uh, the best optimal result. Okay, you could go 600 because a lot of the printers are using 600 DPI, which is fine. But just be aware that your file size, the PDF file size, is going to get bigger and um, your output's gonna be way slower. Something to keep in mind. And do you think that's just good typically to have just ongoing for whatever program? Yes, yeah. yeah, ongoing, okay. So if you're using different different programs, yes, please okay. set this up. Okay. All right, just a simple thing because I got calls all the time saying that why my OLE object's not printing, why my wipeout's not printing, it's that, okay? So something that users just have to be aware of. All right, any question with this? Pretty straightforward. Like a lot of the symbols, uh, if you guys used it, great. But there's something you guys just, like what I've shown you before, is that they'll mirror stuff. Because the, once you start mirroring, things will start to go haywire. Then you're going to have to call me in how to fix it, right? And the other thing I tell users don't do is don't create your custom. Do not do this. Do not add. You notice that when someone starts adding in, they add this XREF, XREF, yeah, it's, just, it's a nightmare to clean out, okay? Just 
as a rule of thumb, leave it as it is. If you want to add more scale, just go to that add scale feature, all right, under your IVI group. And there is a bunch of scales in there if you want to add it in. If you want to add all scale, go to custom and hit reset, and it'll tell you what scale you want to put it in. If you're Imperial, use Imperial. Do not add metric in Imperial, it just makes no sense. Some people does, I don't know why, but I just say just use like one or the other. Don't just say add everything, okay? It makes no sense. So if you want something, just add them in and then there we go. By default, um, this thing's gonna get wiped out every, every day when you close AutoCAD. It, the reason why is that we, we have a script at the background that's gonna wipe out all the unnecessary scale to keep the file size a little bit more hand, like you can handle it. Whereas when you start x with all this scale attached, it's gonna give you that x scale. Okay, that's the reason why you get that x scale is because sometimes you have a scale 116 in one drawing and then it's not on the other and then basically brings in that x scale into it. So if you wanna avoid that, yeah, just add whatever scale you want, okay? And then make sure you delete, uh, like uh, close it, it would just delete everything. Okay. All right. So uh, that's pretty much uh, pretty much what you can do with dynamic blocks. But if you want to go further and further, there's a lot of stuff you can do. This I'm just covering very basic stuff that like a lot of people would use. But if you want to go like a little bit more sophisticated, uh, what you can do, I'm just going to show you what what you can do. Uh, okay. So in design, I, I'm pretty sure that you guys are probably familiar with some of the doors stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go over it because, you know, it's just dynamic block. Uh, stairs, I mean, you could go uh, really crazy with the stair. Let's say I'm going to add one stair. And if you want to, like, change, like, differences between, let's say, uh, scissor stair, then it basically changes the whole dynamic of it. You know, a lot of the stuff, you guys can just play around with it, right? If you if you want to, like, learn a little bit more, then we can do one-on-one -on -one because not everybody's going to be building dynamic blocks. It's similarly, you're not going to be the person that's going to be doing the content for Revit, okay? So it's going to be one person that's going to be it. We want to keep it controlled so that, you know, users just don't muck it up. And the other thing I always tell people is that why we disable rep edit? Rep edit will kill dynamic blocks, okay? The minute I start rep editing, to send an, as an example, okay? I know that some people say, oh, no, 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 I like to do this quickly, right? They say, okay. They say you start editing and you save changes, okay? Now, it's just, a, well, it's still a block. Well, actually, let's, let's do it again, uh, ref editing. Okay, let's say I'm gonna add like a rectangle in here. Let's set it as, as an example, it's gonna save changes, okay? Now it's just a static block, okay? It's not dynamic anymore. So you basically kill the dynamic block, <laughs> okay? It's just, uh, sometimes people just wanna argue saying that, oh, I do this all the time, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know what? Do you want to screw somebody else's work and redo all that stuff? <laughs> sure. Yes. Yeah. Just open a file, like if you want me to modify the dynamic block just because of certain things, just come to me because I would fix it for you, right? Think of this as like Revit, you know, like when you create like a family or anything, right, content related, you need somebody expert to go in there and fix it for you. If you have yourself like busy fingers and say, I want to do this on my own, well, good luck because you just destroy somebody else's work. <laughs> It's something that, yeah, I just want to make sure that users are aware that ref editing with dynamic blocks, it's, it's a no-no, okay? Just, just be aware, because I know that some people like, like Subaru ref editing because it's very simple. Uh, and the other thing uh, a lot of users aren't aware is that when you have, well, right now I'm not editing uh, any extra, but when you do ref editing uh, with an extra, it will always give you this really weird dollar sign, zero dollar sign, kind of like layers. And what happens is that your, um, sometimes your style will have duplication, okay? You will have like dollar sign, zero dollar sign, and then, you know, aerial, blah, 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 right? It's because whenever someone ref editing something, it will basically take those dimension style and then just put it into your drawing. And then what happens is that you end up with like 20 different, 20 different textiles, which you do not want, 
This is why I said don't do it, right? Okay. Some of the stuff a dynamic block can do is that you can actually add like a database into the dynamic block. What I mean by database is that um, I'm just going to use this as a perfect example. I just did a recently a, a project. Uh, it's for the guys in Tel Aviv. Okay. So what this does is that they have a room tag and they're using basically, um, you have to do one for the Hebrew and the other one is basically uh, in English. So you have two teams. One team is in Tel Aviv. The other one is in Toronto. One knows English, the other knows Hebrew. So imagining trying to work on projects that have two different languages and nobody knows each other's language. So what I did with the dynamic block is that I, I basically create like a, a dynamic block that both teams, whether you're working in Toronto office, which knows English, or Tel Aviv only use Hebrew. So what they can do is that they could just basically choose what they want. So here, what I did is that I just basically give like a Hebrew text and stuff like that. And then when it changed that and then regenerate, that value would start to change as well. Okay. This allows them to basically, you know, just use one block and then just repeat that process. Right. So they don't have to like copy different, different types of blocks. And all they have to do is just use one block and then they just have it that. Okay. And, and can they toggle that off and on? Yeah, like if they were submitting, if both cities were working on this project and yes. they have them, you know, like let's say there's a, a RCP or something where they yep. just have so limited space because there's so much information. Yes. They can toggle it off or on yes. and they submit to the city. Yes, that's right. You can but do that. But they can keep them both live yes. back and forth. Okay. That's correct. Uh, because a lot of the stuff I built it in, like I built in like the, the user define so that user can define their own stuff or they could uh, do a lot of the stuff. So dynamic block is it's not limited to anything. If you want to do it, it can be done. Do you toggle, toggle it off and on by, by, by default? By, by, on, by, by default, not, not per... Well, they want to show both. They want to show, the, the, the client wants so to show. You, how do you turn it, toggle it off? Uh, I have to build it in, but the thing is, is I don't want to show both. But in the past, I did turn on and off. They say, nah, I don't want it. Like, it, it's customizable, right? It's just a parameter, like, inside the thing, visibility thing, on and off, what you want, okay? But the translation, everyone has to ask, right? Yes, that's Nobody correct. Is. That's correct. Then, well, maybe I should show you, like, what this inside looks like, okay? So just, like, for curiosity, right? So what happened is that I have one, it's called the, um, okay. So it's a database on top of database, okay? This is like uh, how it works is that I have a room name. This is predefined, okay? What I have is that this is all presets with what value goes with what. And then whatever it triggers certain value or certain parameter, it will report back a certain one and then trigger that becomes of that value. Yeah, yeah, it's very... You know what, leave it with me. I'll make some modifications. I'm sure you'll be happy with the results. Yeah. yeah. Just a little complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated, right? So, okay. Be sure you don't get... Yeah, I know. I know, because uh, some people are like, what the heck do you do, right? But this is what I'm saying. You can, you can go crazy with the... Right? It, not a simple stuff, but that aside, I'm going to show you similar things that I have built in into the, the database. Okay, so let's say this is a Hebrew thing, it's just another thing. Um, how many of you guys use like uh, door schedule, create door schedule and stuff like that, so, and room tags? So what happened is that inside this, uh, I have built in into this uh, schedule tags. Uh, so let's say I'm assuming that I'm going to use a door tag. Okay. Okay. This is my door tag, and within that door tag, it's only simple. This parameter slot like that, circle, etc. But within here, when you go to properties and you scroll all the way down, you notice that there is a lot of functionality built into this. So let's say, for example, my door type is going to be double door. It's going to be, let's say, glass. Okay. Uh, let's say, yeah, let's go crazy, one hour, three hour. Uh, let's say preset, whatever, aluminum, uh, let's say, yeah, press metal, just whatever, factory finish, pre-finish, yeah, sure, paint it. So you can do that crazy stuff. Well, now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this. 
okay? I'm going to give each one a different value, okay? So what I do is that this is going to be number two, uh, number two. This is like your typical um, door schedule, right? So here I'm just going to say this is number three. Going to be number four. So let's say that this is your door schedule. Okay. Now, if you want to generate like a live schedule based on that parameters, okay. So what you're going to do is that, well, before I do anything, let me copy to a new project. <laughs> save it first. You have to save it. I don't want to mess around with that project. So I'm going to save this. Okay. Save as. Um, drawing, drawing one. Yeah, sure. Drawing one is fine. You save it. Okay. So let's say you want to do a schedule based on that, that door tags that you put in. The first thing you want to do is you type in the, the command called eat text. Okay. The next thing you want to do is that, yeah, sure. I'm just going to create a new database, but if you know there is a template, I would always use the template, but right now we don't have it, so we're just going to use one. The template is going to be inside your uh, sheet set manager. So if you click on uh, a sheet set manager, let's say for instance any sheet set manager, uh, let's say I'm going to go 2016 and template. Inside the sheet set manager, it has um, a folder called the database. Okay, let's say uh, standard uh, data extraction. Okay, under your standard, there's a data extraction, and then this is basically the template for the doors. So you can actually extract those information. Okay, for now, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna start from scratch. Okay, but if you wanna use the template, yes, use those templates. Okay, next you wanna do is that, you wanna save? Sure, I'm gonna save, it's the door schedule uh, sample. Call it that name. Current drawing, sure. Now, what it's going to do is that it's going to ask you what you want to extract. I want to extract the one tag that was in there, which is this guy right here, door tag. Click on next. Now, the next thing you want to do is that 0102, that's where you want to extract those schedule. Okay, let's say I want all that attribute to be turned off. Let's say what I have. Okay. There we go. There's 17. There's, there's a lot of the other stuff. But if you use the template, it will basically siphon through what schedule needs to be extracted. But for now, I'm just gonna say, okay, sure, just use that and then just turn off the, the rest of the other stuff. Okay, I don't need that. And then go next. Uh, sure, and then just say, do not show those. Combine identical role, now that's okay. insert it here. I'm going to call this door schedule. Finished. Okay. If let's say I'm adding another door, let's say this is going to be number five. Okay. What you can do here is that once you've done that, you can go right click and update. And what happened is that it's gonna take that and then add another one, okay? So if you're doing your schedule with all this preset, everything all set up for you, you can just change whatever you want. And what happens is that that schedule is gonna feed in this, this live data. So is that like profile that's gonna feed it? Uh, you could do profile or you could do like multiple files. So you can have a door schedule that can read like, let's say level one and then level two, level three, level four, blah, blah, blah. And then create this kind of like a, a schedule file to itself. And then what it does is that it will read that file again, just keep reading that stuff. So here are some of the stuff that you guys could start using. This is sort of like, you know, if you, if you want to understand how Revit works, this is similar how it works, okay? Because I know a lot of people just use Excel, copy it in. But unfortunately that's like, you know, What's the point? Because you have to go back and forth. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Whereas if the door tags have all the parameters in their preset, you go in there to say change whatever value you want, this will automatically just generate from that information. Okay, simple as that. And the other thing is, is that this 
um, schedule. If you have an Excel, you have to constantly go in there and then figure out what's been changed. And I know that sometimes uh, for new user, especially, they have to go in and check every single door. It's just a waste of time. Okay. Whenever you have this data already extracted, it's right in there. So that's all the user has to do. Any questions so far? My question is, when I need when I need a good door schedule, yes. will you be at your desk for me to ask the reminder? Oh yes, you can. But make sure you set a time. Uh, let's say, yeah, sure. you know, like before you attempt to do this, yeah. right? It's just really such a handy tool and a real time saver. But yeah. I know that if I were just to start jacking around with it, it would be like, oh, where was this? So I do need to. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's a good thing. Yes. Yes. Next the, time I start doing some drawing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's why I want people to kind of like thrive into. It's more of a think of it as a BIM process, right? So that you have mm -hmm. something, an object, and it can be extracted. Similarly, how that dynamic block for that, um, you know, the Hebrew and the text, it's, it's the same thing. So once you built that in, the user can actually extract the schedule, and then they have the room schedule already built in. Okay. So I would say yes, you could still do it. Now, if you guys want to do like uh, like edit, let's say for example, this takes too long. There's always alternative to everything. So what you could do is that I'm not sure if you used this command before. It's att out. Okay, att out. What it does is that you can take that attributes. If you have like a door schedule that you want to do, and then you want to customize it, and then feed it back into AutoCAD, and then updates it. This is how you do it. I just go att out. Uh, what does this that? It basically creates a text file. Okay, sure. I'm going to save it. Sure. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select this five um, five objects. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an Excel. Okay. You don't have to always use AutoCAD. Okay. If you if you think that you're not comfortable, do this method. And what you're going to do is that you're going to go into um, file open, uh, okay, file, uh, computer, browse. I think that was on my desktop, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is that choose the text. Okay. Could be this. Is it 20? Yeah, this is the one. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to hit open. Just leave it as it is. Okay, now what happens is that it's going to give you all that preset that you guys can actually go in there and then just monkey around. Okay, so assuming that, okay, I want certain value to be certain things. So what you can do is that I'm going to monkey around some of this stuff. So I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy that, paste it in, and then say, okay, this is, this is what I want. This is a demo. Okay, so what you could do is that you could just monkey around, do whatever you want to get your value, okay, out of your schedule. Once you've done that, I'm gonna go. I gotta go put in whatever value, a, you know, just whatever value you want. But make sure that you don't fill in anything that is blank, or else it starts generating errors. Okay. I'm just gonna just put in whatever value just just for demonstration's sake. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Once you have that, you're gonna save. Yes. Now, next thing you want to do, I'm gonna say don't save that. Okay. You want to basically take that value and then just pump it back in here. So what you're gonna use is that you're gonna use the command called attn. Okay. I'm going to use the same one and then hit open. And then what happened is that this guy, update, and then, you know, whatever value that's put in there, it's there. This is a demo. This is a demo. There you go. Okay. I think I probably picked the wrong information where I put it in. Regardless. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's basically, you could still use the Excel if you're comfortable with it, right? You just like, you kind of have to know how to play around with the database, right? Take it out, put it back in, and then away we go. Okay? So you're not relying on Excel. You're relying on objects that basically you can drive it out, 
put it back in whatever information you want. Okay, this is pretty pretty handy. Okay, so you're not stuck with just using oh I have to use the dynamic block whatever, but you can still export that out and modify it and then put it push it back in with Excel. Okay, hopefully that's a that's a good demo uh, you guys could use. I mean this is sort of things that you guys are going to be using quite a bit. Okay, so. I wouldn't say that you, you should stop using Excel and type it in manually, but you know, just think of it as a different way to how to engage your drawing. So you always have something that's more coordinated, more updated, so that you're not relying on uh, Excel and AutoCAD to be two different platforms, but they can actually link them together. And I've seen, like I've worked on a project where somebody was working on Excel and then they saved it to a PDF and then inserted the PDF, and then every time the client, well, because the client Every time a client changed their schedule, they would send it to us mm -hmm. on PDF, and we would have to reinsert and make sure it was right. And it was just, it was sloppy and amateurish. Yes. And it drove me crazy, and yes. she changed it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this, she could still have worked in Excel and could have just. So, yeah. Anyway, so many things that, I mean, the world is huge, and I know the world is huge. <laughs> yeah. So the fact that that's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this this option was been around since 2004 or 2006. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But, you know, it's old. To me, so. And uh, yeah, this is how I would use it. Like, if if anybody wants to generate schedule and stuff like that, like a complicated stuff, I would go this route. Uh, I know some people are using FSR, like doing FSR calculation for the city and stuff like that. They would use this kind of a method, but some of them are still using the Excel where you punch it in, but every time the line keeps moving, you have to re manually enter in those values, which I find it to be very cumbersome. So if they have a tag and then you say attach that polyline to like let's say a dynamic block with the field attached to it, then the user can actually extract the data and then it's always going to be updated. So it makes sense, I would say. But you know, we're living in a world where 2D is still 2D, right? <laughs> we're still using Imperial. Yeah. In yeah. our metric country. So hopefully I've, those people will find it useful. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, just let me know.